Hi guys. All right. So this will be the last lecture of the semester. I am just excited, as excited about this as you guys are. I am sure. All right. So today um, we'll talk a little bit, of, a little bit about how to use uh, the SQL query language to manipulate data in your database. So we will work with the following relational database schema, where we have uh, six tables, I guess. Okay, so we have the employee table, which holds uh, which holds employee names, their social security numbers, their birthdays, their address, their sex, their salary, their supervisor's social security number, and their department number. Okay. Now the cool thing about the social security, the supervisor's social security number is that it just references another social security number in the table. So the only person without a supervisor is James E. Borg. All right, then each employee also belongs to a department. So here we have department number for employee and here we have the department number in department. So um, this is a foreign key into this table where the numbers in here have to correspond to some number in here. Okay, departments names will have names. Um, they will have the manager social security number, which points back to this table, and manager start date. Then you have department locations, which will be in some place. The reason we don't have them in this table is because a department might be in multiple locations. Um, and then we have what? Uh, then we have some set of projects with project number and location and department number. And then we have a table that relates what employee works on what project and for how many now hours. And then finally, there's a table of dependents where um, it lists family members of the different employees. Okay, so we have a mini world which describes the company and some sort of tables that describes the employees in that company, the projects they work on and the departments within which they work on and their dependents. Um, that may need to be covered by some benefits, for example. Okay, so a pretty simple setup. Um, and so um, SQL is a structured query language, which comes from structured English query language in its original form. Um, and creating SQL was one of the major reasons for the success of relational databases because um, it made it really easy to use those databases from many different systems. Um, and SQL will express definitions, queries, and updates. Basically, anything you want to do with the data uh, can be expressed in some form through an SQL query or through a number of SQL queries. Um, all right, so first we want to create the database. We'll simply say create schema company that I've already done for you. This is more specific to MySQL. We'll be using a simplified database called SQLite where uh, there's only one schema called main. Um, so it's a bit simpler uh, in, in what we're using. And then you can say create table uh, company employee or in our case, just create table employee uh, to create a relation for employees which will correspond to uh, this table. So I've already created all this stuff for you guys. So it should be easy, but just in case you're starting from scratch, that is what you might use. Okay. So to create a table, you need to say, all right, employee contains all these different uh, relations. Okay. Uh, sorry, all these different entities. Um, these are the types of the entities. Some of them may be null, some of them may be not null. So for example, we may enforce that the employee has first name and last name. Um, and then you can say that the primary key, the thing that has to be unique among all the employees is their social security number. Okay. And you can enforce some referential constraints. For example, that social security number has to be one of employee social security numbers. And then the employee department number has to reference some actual department in the company, which is expressed in this department table. Um, so by creating, by having a bunch of these create statements, you can create the tables in your lab, in your database, and then add um, entries into them. 
Um, all right, so you can pick different types, integers, ints, small ints, floats, reals, kind of depending what data you're storing in, the, in your database and how much space do you think each field should have. You don't want to use too much space, for example, using an integer when like a tiny int or a small int could suffice. Um, or, but you don't want to use floats when your values really have double precision, in which case you should use double precision numbers. Um, you can also enter string data through characters, uh, specify the number of, uh, the number of uh, characters in that string. This is if you want fixed length. If you want just strings with up to some number of characters, you can use a varchar. Um, you can use binary data. You can use all kinds of things. Um, there's a lot of documentation on that stuff. Okay. Um, some important things are dates. They are treated a little bit uh, specially in, in the way they're stored and intervals where you can add intervals to dates. Okay, so you can think of date as being a point in time and interval being something you can add to a point in time to move it to a particular location. Okay, um, and then timestamps are more accurate dates, which would also include time. Okay, um, also you can have time zones included. So databases are convenient in, in that they take care of all these um, quite complex sometimes time manipulations for you. Um, you can also define custom fields. These are called custom domains, um, where SSN type would be would always contain nine characters. Um, you can contain different sets and enumerations where maybe you have a choice of only three different values from, from a set. Um, and so uh, the difference between enumeration is that you would have one of those values and a set could have a subset of those values, for example, red and green. Okay. And so when you create a table, you can also create a number of uh, constraints. We already talked about it where foreign key has to reference, foreign key uh, is defined such that the supervisor's social security number has to exist in the employee table as a social security number. Now, the question is what happens is when you delete a supervisor, okay? So for example, if you delete a, uh, if you delete an employee, okay, the supervisor social security number would be set to null. So we don't need to delete the supervised employee, right? But if you update the social security number of an employee, then that value would also be updated in the super SSN. Okay? So you can kind of enforce these constraints in a way that uh, when you make changes to one row, it would automatically update or delete or set value to default in another. So as we mentioned already, you can have different types of constraints. Um, you can have key and referential constraints. Those are the foreign keys. Um, you can have restrictions on the type of values that you can put in, for example, values from a particular set, um, or you can disallow nulls. Um, you can have all kinds of other constraints um, that you can define. You can also define default values. Um, all right, what else do you want to talk about? Uh, so primary keys um, are constraints on a table where uh, it forces one value in a table or one attribute in a table to be unique. So the example there was that social security number is unique for, for each employee. Uh, but even if something is not a primary key, you can still force it to be unique, um, for example, each department needs to have its own unique name. You can't have two departments with the same name, even though department number is actually the primary key. Um, I already talked about these, the, oh, what happens on delete and what happens on update. I think we can skip that. Um, let me skip that too. All right, let's get to, let's get to SQL. Um, so basically, when we're getting data in SQL, you would be selecting some sort of attributes from some sort of tables, and then you're going to pass some sort of conditions on that. Okay. So let's say that we want to, that we have our table employee, 
and then from there we want to select the birthday and address um, of an employee whose name is such and such right so then we would say select birthday address from table employee where first name equals John middle initial equals B and last name equals Smith okay so when we run this you'll see that this is the answer okay convenient now let's see how we can do this in C Lion. Let me make this a bit bigger for you guys. Okay, cool. So in CSCI 366 examples, I set up a um, SQL light um, directory which contains the following project so a couple things about it um, to run this project you need to install SQL light on your uh, WSL uh, or Windows subsystem for Linux to do this you need to run this command to install the shared library for um, um, SQL light all right then uh, there's also a sub-module, which is SQL uh, Lite Modern CPP. You may need to initialize sub-modules, or if using Git, Git Kraken, that will happen for you guys automatically. So then we want to run a query. And you can go to this page to see a whole bunch of other examples. But basically what happens is we're opening some database. So I've created a, a file here with the data. Um, which is uh, company.sqlite. And then we pass, we format an SQL query. So we'll select birthday and address from employee where first name equals something and last name equals something. Now you can put those strings in here directly, but what you can also do is input them here. And this allows you to input not just strings, but for example, integers or values from variables, right? It's a pretty convenient syntax. So we're going to find birthday and address from employee where first name equals John and last name equals Smith. Okay. Now the result of that, there could be multiple rows, but each row will be passed into this Lambda function. What is a Lambda function? Some of you guys have not seen it. Well, it's a function that doesn't necessarily have a name. We can just use this set of characters to define it as Lambda. Um, where the name of it doesn't matter because it gets called immediately with the return of this query. And because we are selecting two different things, this query will return two different things, which is birthday and address in that order. So these names don't need to match, but we can match them just for convenience. These become basically input variables into this function. Now you need to pay a little bit of attention when it comes to types. Um, for example, your database might be returning an integer, but in this case, birthday and address will both be strings. Okay. And then we can simply print out birthday and address um, using the cout within this Lambda function. So when we run it, we get the result. We get the birthday and we get the address, the employee, right? And then you can pass this instead of printing it out, put it into variables, do whatever you want with the data. Um, Again, more examples can be found here. But what we'll do for convenience is actually use an, a database explorer. So I'll show you guys how to set this up. Let me delete this. All right, so the first thing you need to do is you'll go to view, uh, tool windows, and then you'll go to database. Okay, so that takes us here. Now, you need to set up a connector, which you'll click on here, and then you'll click on uh, SQL light. Okay. And then what you got to do is there's going to be a button here for you guys that says install. Okay. So you just got to click on that, install it, and then you have a connector. Now you need to connect to a database. So you'll do a data source, SQL light, or in your case, it might be somewhere here. Okay. And then we need to connect to a file that stores the, the database. So to find that file, We'll go to here, which is in the CSCI 366 example. 
I'll use the library that I'm copying, not this one, but the one I copied into the CMake folder, which is here. So this is the same one that my code is using when it runs. And there's my database. You can expand it and you can look at all kinds of stuff in here about um, these tables, including the foreign keys, indices, etc. All right, that's maybe not so interesting to us until we get to uh, CSCA 440, but here we can start writing our SQL. So we can select everything from employee, for example, does auto complete, control enter to run, or press this run button, and here's the results. Or you can have your other query, which was, I think, birth date and address. Okay, you can kind of divide it like this from employee where first name equals John and last name equals Smith. And we get the same data. All right. So often it's convenient to form your queries here, just in a connector to a database. And then once you're, from, once you're good with it, then translate and grab that and input it into your code um, with the parameters that you want. All right. So that's our first query. Super easy. Um, you can also join data in different tables to form more complex queries. So for example, we want the first name, last name and address of an employee who works in a department called research. All right. So we know from the employee table that each employee works in some department number. And now we need to find a department whose name is research. And the number of the department is the same as the department number of the employee. Okay, so now we're selecting data from both tables. All right, so let's see how this would work. So we would say uh, select first name, last name, address from employee and department. Okay, where, um, what did we have? The name. Okay, so this is from the department, department name. See, this is the department table, this is the employee table. So the D name is in the department table, equals research. And we want the department number of the employee to match the department name of the department in the department table. So we can say D number in the department table equals DNO in the employee table. And there we go. We have a list of all the people and their addresses who work in the research department. All right, same thing, cool. Um, so it's also possible that you're gonna have attributes with the same name in different tables. Okay, so for example here, the department and department locations both have D number. So what can we do? Well, we can specify names of the tables and then refer to those when we uh, talk about their attributes. Okay, so let's say we're gonna select everything. From, um, what do we want? We want department, we're gonna call it D and uh, department locations, location in this case, locations on the slides, sorry about that, um, L, okay? And then where D dot, and now it gives us options, D number is equal to L dot D number. Cool, there we go. Okay, so now we're getting everything where department members match. Okay. 
All right, so here's a little practice for you guys, if you want to try it. What are the last names of employees and their supervisors? Okay. Um, and then what are the last names of employees and the names of projects that are each working on? Um, you can come up with SQL queries to do this and then go ahead and practice, try to get them to work in the console. Or if you want to see the answers, here they are. Okay. So this is kind of cool because we're going to query from the same table twice. Right? So we can say uh, select last name and last name. One is from employee, one is from supervisor, but the supervisor is also the employee. And then we want to say where the employee's supervisor's SSN equals the SSN of the supervisor. All right, I guess all right, maybe this is what the last ones will do. Select e dot actually sure we'll do this to make it easier so we're gonna say from employee e employee s okay now we can go back here and hopefully we'll use the names yay okay e dot l name and then s dot l name okay where e dot Super SSN equals S dot SSN. There you go. And now we know who supervises whom. Cool. Second query was what are the last names of employees and the names of projects they're each working on? Okay, so we want the last name of employee and the project they're working on. And now we're selecting from employee project and this works on table that links employees and projects okay and so the ssn of the employee has to equal to the ssn in the works on table and then the works on table project number has to equal the project number in here all right and now we're going to able to link these tables and then have last name and project name printed out It's also possible to don't specify the where clause. That basically will return everything from the table. Okay, um, but you can also result. Uh, you can also return way too much information. So, for example, if you do this, you're gonna get uh, all the social security numbers and all the department names, and there's not necessarily any relation between these, right? You're just kind of multiplying. Uh, each social security number by each department name, right? If you had a WHERE clause, which is really what the WHERE clause does, you'd be able to select some sort of matching between the two, right, based on some other fields. But without that, you're just going to print out everything from one table kind of repeated by the other table. All right, these things are called cross joints. All right. Um, so, um, you can also get duplicates, right? So here we select salary from employee, but you can add a distinct keyword to have unique salary or distinct salary be returned. Okay. And then you can also treat the results of uh, your queries as sets. Okay. So if we have this relation and this relation, we can union them together to get all of them together like this, or you can do an intersection uh, between the two to get things that they have in common. Okay. So this allows us to do tricks like the following. We can show the unique names of all supervisors and show the last names of employees who are not working on a project. You can take a moment and uh, think about what that would look like. All right, so here we have distinct last name so uh, just the supervisors, okay? And here you can use accept or a nested clause, okay? To get the last name of employees who are not working on a project, right? So we have last name of all employees, except, so not the last names of employees that work on some project, okay? 
or last name from employees where, does not, where there does not exist an employee that works on a particular project. Um, you can also use the like keywords to do pattern matching. Okay, so this is kind of like wildcards. Um, you can order the results um, by descending or ascending. This is actually kind of interesting. So if we do this, we'll say, let's say select what are we selecting? Everything from employee and then order by last name, salary, descending. All right, what do you think the results should be? Hmm, well, the salary is not necessarily descending because we go from 55,000 to 25 to 25 to 38. Hmm, so what's happening? Well. We're ordering actually by last name and salary. So the last name is actually ordered. And if there are ties in here, if there were people with the same last name, which we don't, then their salary would be ordered. Okay. So we can change it to something else. For example, we can order by salary and then by last name. All right. So let's say. I'm going to do salary descending last name. Okay, so now the salary is strictly descending and where we have a tie between the different salaries, okay, now the last names are ordered. Um, so using the like keyword, you can find the last names, birth dates of all employees born in the 1960s. Okay. And you can also show the social security numbers of employees after just the female employees get a 10% raise. All right. So for this, you can do a select where birth date is like matches anything. Then there's a six and then there's a ampersand for something for the, uh, some year in the sixties. Okay. The one tricky thing here is that you need to have uh, you need to replace these kind of whatever uh, PowerPoint quotes with uh, straight quotes. Okay, so if you're copying this over, so if we copy this over, you see these quotes aren't really well liked, and so we need to do this, and then we need to add a semicolon to close the statement, right? And now we have, we're matching the first two characters. So something, something has to be here. That's 19, then a six, then whatever. That's the five, eight, six, two. And, and then it's not just whatever for one character, it's whatever for everything else. So we just care that the sixth is in the uh, third position here. Um, and then you can show the social security numbers and salaries of employees after just the female employees get a 10% raise. And you could do that by multiplying salary by 1.1 when you query it from employee where sex is female and then union all the male with all the male employees. Okay. Um, you can also, so these are all queries. You can also use SQL to insert data. So for example, we can add an employee where we insert into the employee table. Pointer. We insert into the employee table values and then here's all the values that need to be ent entered. So strings are in quotes, values don't need quotes. Um, you need all the different rows to be able to, to create a row. Okay. Um, or if you have some default values, you can just kind of, you can just use a shorter tuple. Okay. But you need to pay attention to the department number that you pass in. So if you're creating somebody with department number two, that is not going to be allowed because there is no department number two in the department table. Okay. Similarly, you can delete data. You could say delete from where to match some set of rows, last name equals Brown. 
there is no brown, so this would be no effect. You can delete an employee where social security number equals this, but if this is a supervisor of somebody, there uh, we may also update other rows. Okay, um, you can delete from employee where department number equals five. That will de uh, delete four rows, but you can't delete everything from an employee table. You would need to use a drop table command to do that. Finally, you can update information in a project. Okay, so you can update project where you set project location Bel Air um, to Bel Air and department number to five, where project number equals 10. Okay, or you can simply update the salaries of all the employees in department number five. Um, or update social security numbers. Okay, so here's practice for you guys. Create a new project cube in Houston with employee Borg working on it. How would you do that? So first you would need to create a project cube and then you would need to enter a works in relationship to task employee Borg with working on that particular project. And then Houston is uh, here, right? And so to delete, you could delete from project where project name equals cube and delete from works on where social security number is this and project number equals four. All right, so that's a kind of a whirlwind tour of SQL. Um, in all honesty, this should probably have been spread out over a couple lectures, but we are at the end, so that's where it is. Um, I will use a little bit of SQL in your final exam. Now, it's going to be much simpler stuff that we went over today. Uh, fairly simple things. I know there's a lot of different uh, possibilities here, but I'm not gonna use very complex questions, so don't worry about it. You will also have access to the employee table in your SQL, so you can try these queries before you select your answers. Um, and um, you'll have a lot of time for the exam too. So you'll have time to kind of come up with, with answers um, by consulting the slides and consulting um, this example project. All right, let me know if you guys have any questions about the exam or anything else. Um, I'm gonna tell you it has been a pleasure working with you uh, on this course. Um, I like this course a lot, even though this is only the first time I'm running it. I'm sure it's gonna get a lot better over the years. So. Thank you for working uh, with me through the growing pains of it. And um, yeah, I hope you guys have a good summer and I'll see you next year, hopefully in CSCI 466. All right, bye-bye.